we're on an adventure. Uh, I haven't been up here yet, but we're bringing up half the trusses. We actually haven't prepared the site yet. <laughs> what a day. Here we are. This is going to be a 30 by 30 garage. It's basically a, uh, a hunting camp kind of thing for toys. There'll be a little 8 by 8 bump out on the back. Um, they have about 400 acres way up into the woods here. So they're very secluded. It's pretty exciting. We're, we're, uh, we're going to be living out in nature. Looking forward to doing this one. We have the rough 30 by 30 laid out. We'll do the 8 by 8 after we uh, do diagonals on this to make sure that um, it's perfectly square. We've measured all four sides so we know they're exactly 30 feet. Five and a half. Forty-two feet five and a quarter. Forty-two feet five and eight. So we have it perfectly squared. We're going to drive stakes in the corners, two stakes in each corner. When we put stakes in the corners, we stay as close to the corner as we can. Otherwise, when we get to straighten the wall, we'll string the wall and straighten it up even more. Uh, but if you go out too far, like uh, out here, if you go that far, then you can't, it creates a bow in the corner. Bad. <laughs> point out that after we put the stakes in, we don't screw them or secure them to the corners yet till we do transit shots. The, the excavator did an excellent job here. I just want to show you. We built a really nice swale all the way around so that water will stay away from the slab, keep it completely dry, which is most desirable. Back to work. So now we're running string around. We put nails uh, one inch in on uh, all four sides. So we'll secure this to it. Then we can go down through and measure an inch off of this to the inside of the form board, pull it in or out as needed. That way it makes our walls perfectly straight. Now we'll go around with the transit to we'll check the four corners, make sure that we're uh, good on the corners. Whew. We are just about ready. The truck's supposed to be here in about 20 minutes. We'll tie off the rebar, pick it up off the ground, and then we're ready to pour 19 yards of concrete. Looks like we're going to make it. We, um, we're almost done tying that off. We'll put the blocks underneath, get that up, and wait for the concrete truck.
So that's 19 yards on the ground. Came out really nice. We're going to bull float it next, and then we'll wait a little bit and get onto it with the power trowel. You can see this. It's made when you turn the handle, it changes the angle. It's pretty slick so you can push out and then turn it and pull back. All right, so we're in the woods. We have a load of walls. We've unloaded a few. Haven't put them up yet. We're putting the sill seal on right now on the pressure treated bottom plate. Now we're gonna take some walls off and lay them out. We're not going to put up much today. It's uh, almost the end of the day. And it's supposed to be nasty overnight. So I don't wanna put walls up and have them blow down in the night. All right, so we're setting up all the uh, air hoses, generator, all everything we need to get going. Getting a little bit of rain, but it should be hopefully not too bad. Our goal today is to get the walls up, uh, at least get two rows of sheathing up. It's their uh, 10 foot walls. Um, it's gonna be a nice kind of a camp sanctuary for their four-wheelers and all the toys should look pretty cool when it's done This particular job for trucking the wall panels over the road, uh, we can only be eight feet wide or so, and the walls are 10 feet high, so we only did eight foot sections. So I didn't mark out all the plates for the top, top plate. I'll do that now as we're going. Coming along pretty good.
You guys are getting way ahead of me. Putting on the uh, OSB, got a couple courses up there, it's looking good.